you're not going to be recording a, a sports event and watching it the next day because you know what the results are. So that's going to be live. You are going to see the commercials. So we think that sports uh, franchises will become more and more valuable and uh, and be quite quite unique assets. That's Phil Lind and the late great Ted Rogers. We went into the archives for that interview right there, Phil. You do had a premonition about the future of television programming and a lot of secrets of your brand new book. Here it is, The Right Hand Man. And if you didn't know, Phil Lind was the right hand man. 40 years working alongside Ted Rogers. Congratulations on this. Thank you. Um, it is really interesting, and you're very candid about talking about mixing friendship with business because you and uh, uh, the late Ted Rogers were strong business leaders. How did you do it? How did you mix both and achieve results like you did for this company? Well, I think we like people for one thing. That's the, that's, that starts it off. And um, when you like people, you can get into what they're doing and then they get into what you're doing and all of a sudden you've got a big bond. And in that bond, sometimes it's tricky because you don't see eye to eye. And this book is essentially a playbook for some big business deals. And you had the label of being the abominable no man to Ted Rogers. So how do you say no, even when you like people and still have productive conversations? And it starts with respect. Uh, I mean, it, it, I, I couldn't have walked in there and, and said no to everything. Rogers would have tossed me out. Uh, but he respected me and I respected him and uh, that's how that worked. Of all of these deals that stand out, and I know you're a huge sports fan, you've yeah. been an advocate of seeing what Rogers has done with the NHL, uh, obviously here in our country, but one of the big ones is the game of baseball. Because in what, 2000, Rogers pays 200 million for the Toronto Blue Jays and we've seen this franchise evolve, not just be Toronto's team, but Canada's team. There were a lot of doubters at the time, and we celebrate the Canadians here on the West Coast. What gave you confidence when people are saying, is this the right move? Boy, I'll tell you, doubters, I mean, even our board, every year the board would say, Ted, when are we going to get rid of, when are we going to get rid of the Blue Jays? And Ted would say, I would say, Phil, that's a question that you want to answer. <laughs> um, Ted wanted wanted the baseball team to stay in Toronto. That was number one. And number two, Ted want, Ted knew he didn't know anything about baseball, but he he understood the business of sport, and he knew that people wanted to had to watch it live. And now with everything, everything is all appointment television is almost dead, but it isn't dead for for sports. Golden State tonight. Um, Warriors Raptors, you know, big game. Yeah, I mean the, the Canucks last night. It's uh, Canucks the game tonight. I mean, it's a really good thing. I mean, you have to have cable, and you have to have it. It has to be live. It can't be streamed. It has to be live with Rogers. And you've created experiences over the years. So this is a great uh, book about business, but it's also an important book about life. And when you talk about your most important days, I related to the fact you talk about uh, having your kids, Jed and Sarah, come into your life. But I also looked at the fact at the age of 54, 20 years ago, you suffered a life-altering stroke, but you still managed to persevere and succeed. How overwhelming was that diagnosis and what allowed you to overcome it? Well, it was tough at the time. Um, I couldn't walk. I couldn't talk. I, I was basically in bed and um, it took a long time to, uh, to get better and to learn again how to walk and talk and write because I now have to write with my left hand. Um, it, it took time. And time wasn't something that Ted wanted it to take. Ted was after me from, you know, a, a week later, when are you coming back? And I, I'm not coming back soon. Wow. I mean, he, he was so relentless in terms of his business, 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 business. No work-life balance, just. Uh, no work-life balance and no, no interruption for anything. <laughs> but he never had a stroke, you know. He had aneurysms, he had heart problems, but never, never anything that really stopped him until the end. And then it did stop and the heart gave out. 
So what do you credit to the success as we kind of wrap this up and uh, Ted's book Relentless obviously documents the story of Rogers, but uh, this company in the late 60s started from nothing. Today is a blue Absolutely. chip investment, market cap in the billions. What is it that allowed this company to thrive and allows any leader out there to thrive? Um, Ted's, Ted's um, tremendous energy and optimism and, and ability to fight off anything that, that came in, in, into our way. And um, he just kept at it, kept at it. Didn't matter what, day or night or what the obstacles were. Sometimes, you know, I, I would look at the thing and say, I don't know how we're going to get through the day. Ted would say, what do you mean? We're going to get through the day. We're going to get through the day and we're going to get through tomorrow and we're going to get through every day. Because he had that optimism and tremendous drive. And, and that's the story of this book. I mean, our millennials now think Rogers was always here, like Bell and Tellus. It was always here, but it wasn't always here, as you point out. Ted went from zero to when he died, his company was worth $20, $20 billion in one generation. Huge. That, that doesn't happen. It's never happened in Canada. It happens in Silicon Valley sometimes with Steve Jobs and, and uh, Musk and think people like that, but, but not in Canada. It doesn't happen. And that's all because of Roger's drive. Well, it's a great story to tell. Right Hand Man takes a deep dive into it, how to achieve business success. And uh, you're quite humble, too, because I know Ted probably called you and said, Phil, we're going to do this, and you're going to work 20 hours a day, right? That's how it goes. Well, that's true. You guys worked hard, and the success uh, is definitely out there for us all to enjoy. Listen, Phil, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. Appreciate having you in here in the words. We'll take a break. Watch this on the other side. Stay tuned.